Hey everyone, so um, I am sure that you guys had a great time last week looking at the um, customized tool tips for Google visualizations for the bar chart. Um, as you, I'm sure, appreciate by now, um, you know, the contextual information that we provide along with visualization in the form of rollovers and, um, you know, uh, headers and titles and decks and keys and all of that stuff is extremely is perhaps the mo the most important um, some of the most important elements of making a visualization useful for our readers and so that customization is a really important part of being able to use this this package um, and definitely not uh, not something to be overlooked as you're developing visualizations um, and I have not done nearly uh, as elegant a job as uh, Chris did with you guys, but I have um, updated my own version so you can see I have a customized HTML tooltip here. Went with the Georgia font. Um, obviously, some much better design choices waiting to be made on this example chart. Um, but as we've done the past couple of weeks, we are going to continue to build this week on our Google visualizations work and see how the stuff that we've already done um, can be extended into creating uh, different types of visualizations and also look at what it means to uh, incorporate other data sources. So um, our Guardian data has, has served us well thus far but um, probably is not going to be the thing that, that drives us forward um, in, uh, into your final projects and into more general visualizations. So um, for this week we're going to take a look at um, some nice data from the Federal Reserve um, economic research uh, data arm, uh, which is uh, part of the St. Louis Fed. And uh, as you can see, is they have this lovely uh, inter interface here, 61,000 U.S. and international time series from 53 sources. Um, and uh, really, really great data here. And there is an API for FRED. Um, it is, we're not going to use it because right now it only outputs XML, and while that's certainly doable, it's not as as straightforward as using JSON. Um, I actually did speak to the folks who run their API la the other week at um, the NICAR conference, and it seems hopeful that they will start to provide JSON as an output format uh, fairly shortly. Um, it's a pretty trivial change for them. Um, but even in this format, we can we can get a lot of we can get a lot of mileage out of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at making a new visualization that's based on the ones that we've already created and see how just by you know, duplicating our, our files and adding a few elements, we can really get, um, uh, you know, really make a diverse range of visualizations. So um, the first thing that I'm going to do actually is I'm going to go ahead and copy my, um, my code here. So I am going to copy this. I am going to do, do, do. I thought I was going to paste it, but maybe I'm not going to paste it. Um, come on, guys. I'm going to duplicate this folder. Give me some, uh, give me some love in here. Yes. New. All right. Let's create a new web project. We'll just have to do that, and we'll call it um, Google Viz New. Okay. So all of this is pretty um, straightforward. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy these files paste them into this folder. Now, I want to point out that if I were a bit more generic in my uh, naming conventions, there's actually no reason why, I mean, I could actually have this just be um, a, a holder file, right? I don't even need to change the name of this, but I am going to rename this. I'm going to call this, um, you know, Jeeva's new, right? This is all the setup stuff that you guys are accustomed to, right? And it is really important now. I'm I'm not going to touch. I'm going to rename this right now. I'm going to rename my JSON file because I'm going to use it as a template um, in a minute. But I'm going to import new data into it. So I'm going to call this uh, Fred data. Okay, and here we go. Now let's also rename this. Now, of course, once I rename these things, I need to do. Um, a little bit of remediation, right? Because of course, this file is fine because I'm pulling in all of the same stuff, my various APIs and things. Um, but of course, I'm not pulling in Jeeva's scripts anymore. I'm uh, pulling in Jeeva's scripts new. Um, uh, I don't actually have a, a separate CSS file at this point. I really should, but we'll gloss that for the moment. And of course, inside that scripts file, uh, I want to make sure that I'm loading now the appropriate JSON. So I no longer have Guardian gun laws, I now have FRED data. Now of course we know at this point, right, that the data that's actually in there is the Guardian gun data. But that's one of the first things that we're going to change. And then the second thing that we're going to change 
is we're going to um, we are going to look at uh, we're going to bring in some new data and then we're going to actually just change the visualization that we're that we're producing. So the first thing, um, if we go back to our data source here is just just picking some data at this point and um, you guys are going to need to be a bit more rigorous than I am uh, that's one of the one of the things I get away with I guess um, but I just want you to take a look and this is a really common um, we're not at the API level yet and we will look at that after spring break um, but I just wanted to point out that that one of the keys to finding data sources and working with data sources is you really have to read <laughs> You really have to read a lot. It's not going to be necessarily right in front of you, but as you get familiar with data sources, whether it's um, you know the Census or Fred or other sort of data warehouses, the um, you know the New York City Data Mine now has has quite a lot of information. Um, the New York World actually just had a story about it. Um, pardon me. So we'll see. So one of the things I want to point out here is that I've got a few options. So I can. I, they're giving me a chart here, which is great. It gives me kind of an overview of the data. Um, I can view the data here, and this is just going to give me a text file. Now, there's nothing wrong with this inherently, except that um, I want to change this into something that I can use as part of a JSON file, and um, or rather that that converts easily into a data format that is handy for me. Um, for my Google visualization. So I'm going to render this as a line chart in Google visualizations and of course here's our preview here. Um, and what we notice is that um, as with the previous example, uh, with the bar chart example that we saw in the playground, um, what we have is an array of arrays, right? This is a, an array of four item arrays. Um, and in our code we went through a process the last time to actually convert our JSON data, right, into an array of arrays. Um, and that was how we converted the JSON that looked like this, right, into the specific format that we needed for Google visualizations. Now, in a way, what we're looking to do here is actually a bit simpler, right, because we already have the, the data in something that is close right, to the final output that we're looking for. We're not trying to remediate a pre-existing data source the same way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check, you now if they've got it in a text file, I want to check what other formats are available. And I can see right away that, um, so, you know, again, here's an interface. There are some options provided to me. So one of them is um, the index, the consumer price index, the change from the year before. Um, I'm going to go percent change from a year ago, right? And it's great. I mean, this, this, they have links here to descriptors of the data sets, what they mean, you know, understanding the CPI, frequently asked questions. All of this is information, you know, background information that you would need to know before actually, you know, making a chart for publication about this. Um, but I can specify a date range here. So I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at 2000 um, to 2013. And now I get a file format. And so what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to go with text and I'm going to go with comma separated. Um, I know we've talked about CSV files and the reason why I'm going to go with comma separated is why? Well, actually if I look at it, this is a comma separated array. Um, so it's possible that in downloading this file um, as a CSV, I may actually be able to skip some steps in my code um, to make it usable and loadable um, dynamically as we've been doing. So I'm going to take that, that CSV line. I'm going to go ahead and download that. It says, note CSV files do not contain header information. That's worth noting. Um, and somewhere it has given me the name of that. I didn't realize I had. Oh, yes. So here we go. CP. So when I open this, it's going to open in Excel by default, um, which is not exactly what I'm looking for. And of course, okay, we just, of course there's a critical update because they can't keep their software together. Um, actually, this is really not what I wanted at all. I really wanted to just open it as a, um, as a text file straight in Notepad somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere. Okay, I'm going to have to go to my downloads folder. Um, I don't know why I don't have that default fixed. So let's get rid of that. Here's downloads. My goodness, what are the chances of me finding this? Something about CSVs. Here we go. CPI. I really hate the downloads folder. It, ugh. Goodness gracious. Um, so this is just desperate to open this in 
Excel. I do not want to open it in Excel and it's really not being nice. Okay. One more time, everybody. Sorry about this. Um, I find this extremely frustrating. This is why I don't like Macs. Sorry. I know there are a lot of fans out there. Okay, so I'm just going to get it onto the desktop like a normal thing where I can right click it and say that I want to open it with, um, I just want to open this with text edit. Right? Just because I want to look at it. Just want to look at it. Okay. Lovely. So now I've finally gotten my data under hand in control. So this is the percent change in CPI from the year before. And um, is it? Yes, it appears to be. Okay. So now, again, I just want to point out that this format looks vaguely similar to this format, right? Comma separated value is well, very much like an array. So now I'm going to go ahead and use our very handy Mr. Data Converter. Okay. And I'm going to ask Sean Carter to help me out here. And I'm going to say I want to convert this into JSON row arrays, right? Because if we recall, in our original code, we went ahead and made this into rows. That's what we needed. We needed rows of data. So now I go here. I'm going to select my text data. I'm going to go back to this. I've cho chosen row arrays. I've said first row is the header. I'm going to specify that it's comma separated. Um, I will include the white space in the outputs just fine. Okay. Ta-da! So actually what's really really nice about this is that we've now eliminated one really big step. Um, which was that whole for loop actually that we had to create in order to convert, you know, if we look at this closely, right, you see how there's one, you know, there's sort of a parent bracket for the big, the big array and then each row is one, is a little array in that, which is actually exactly what we saw here. So we have this, if we look back at our code, we constructed this before and then we, uh, we said guardian table add rows row data, right? The row data, uh, if we look at the console and remind ourselves, right, if we look at the console here, right, we see row data is in fact an array of arrays. So by using Mr. Data Converter and this sort of basic output, we can skip this whole part um, where we have to, you know, where we want to go ahead and, and create the, um, where we need to go ahead and create the, the data table. So for now, the first thing I'm going to worry about is actually just putting this in here. And so since I have this array of arrays, I'm going to change this. And instead of saying state data, I'm going to call this CPI data. Okay. And I am just going to replace this whole element. right, with my data set. Okay, so now I have JSON that is a single element, which is an array of arrays, and that single element is called CPI data, right? So up to now, we've taken our data source as something that was, that was given to us. Now we're seeing that we can construct it. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use um, our JSON lint, right, our JSON lint to just check and make sure that this is valid JSON. Looks like everything's okay. It understands what's going on. This is an array of arrays, um, and the title of the element is what we've just created, which is called CPI data. So we've duplicated our code. We've modified our data source. Um, next up, we're going to look at creating a different type of visualization and um, adding some additional features to it. And you'll see how quickly this translates into a completely new visualization. All right, see you guys in a few minutes.